Hello, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, happy 2019, you guys. I haven't seen you since last year. How exciting. Happy New Year. Um, you guys will see a couple of old videos from Vlogmas uh, in the next couple of weeks just because I didn't have a chance to post them. Like, my birthday video never went up. So I'll definitely um, post that. And yeah, you guys will definitely be seeing some things. But Today, I kind of wanted to do a mini review of 2018. And I say a mini review because 2018 was not kind to me. 2018 was one of the hardest years I've ever had in life. And that includes the year that my mother passed away. Um, I think that a lot of the badness of 2018 had a lot to do with me and not so much to do with uh, things that actually happened to me. By the way, this shirt that I'm wearing, oh, it says motherhood is my superpower. If you can see that, my boobs are jacking too. <laughs> if you can see that, motherhood is my superpower. I absolutely love this shirt. And this shirt is by my friend Sabrina of the Falco family. And she's here on YouTube. I'm sure you've already seen her videos. She's fantastic. She is like my homeschool mentor. She doesn't know that. But when I watch her videos, I get such inspiration and I really adore her and her family and they have a t-shirt line so this is a part of their t-shirt line and I will look, link the info for this t-shirt down below so as I was saying 2018 super duper hard year for me lots of tears lots of fear lots of fear lots of being run into the ground by fear lots of anxiety lots of um, feeling lost and I know I'm not lost because I'm a child of God. And I know that, you know, he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I know that he is with me all the way wherever I am. But it's me. It's me. It's me that's the problem. And I'm sorry for all the shadows. I have to have a light on right now because it is almost dusk. So it's pretty dark outside so there's no natural light. Um, so yeah, it's all me. And I do accept that and I do understand that it is me. But it was a rough it was a rough uh, year for me. Uh, homeschool, the year was fine. Uh, we accomplished most of the things we set out to accomplish. That was okay. Uh, Health-wise, there was just so many things happening with my health that had nothing to do with nothing. And what I mean by that is um, you're used to the health issues that come with you're not doing this enough or you're not doing that enough or you need to start doing this or you need to start doing that. When you have health issues that have nothing to do with something that you can automatically fix by um, drinking more water, watching what you eat, going for walks, that sort of thing, it can be paralyzing um, emotionally and mentally. And that's what it was for me. Uh, for instance, I have now been dealing with high blood pressure since I had Isabella. I was in a hospital with preeclampsia with her. The high blood pressure from that never went away. And um, my doctor fully believes that it could go away. Um, and I'm on board with that. I know that 60% of the high blood pressure I experience is from anxiety and stress, okay? So I, I know that with those things eliminated that um, it would be better. But then there are times when it's just erratic and it's erratic because I also have PMDD, something else that I cannot control, okay? So I have, when PMDD, when the symptoms come on, one of the symptoms I get is high blood pressure. For about four days, my blood pressure is just like, um, a little bit hard to manage and I have to stay on top of making sure that I'm taking the maximum dose, well not the maximum dose, um, almost the maximum dose of my blood pressure medicine during that time period because of the hormonal changes in my body. It's a lot to deal with and during those times I seriously feel like I'm going to die. During those times I feel like my life is crap and I cry because I'm not normal. I cry because I can't, I feel like I can't leave the house because I'm afraid that something is going to happen to me if I leave the house during those times. I'm sorry, I'm tearing up because it's real. This is real. What I experience is real and it's hard and it affects the way that I'm mother. It affects the way that I'm a wife. It affects the way 
I move about my day. It affects whether or not I say yes to different invitations that I get. It affects a lot of my life for that time period. And as you know, because I've discussed PMDD a lot on this channel, that's just one of the symptoms of my PMDD. Not everyone experiences that symptom. I don't even know if that's listed as a symptom, but for me, it is. Um, so, like I said, happens like clockwork usually every month. And, you know, I've just been prayerful that it will correct itself or I will be led to understand how I can correct it. So that's just one of the the things that goes on with me that it's just out of my control. Like every month it happens, I can't stop my hormones. Like that's just, you know, I'm a lady and we go through these hormone fluctuations when Aunt Flo decides that she is going to show up and you know, that's that. The only thing that I thought of is that, you know, maybe having a hysterectomy is the answer, but I don't want a hysterectomy. I am fairly young. It is it's not something that I want right now. We're not positive that we're done with kids. I mean, we're like 85% sure that we are, but you know, that's not 100. So, you know, that's just not something that I want to do at this period of time in my life. So, um, also dealing with the anxiety oh gosh anxiety will come and try to destroy your whole entire life and it, like it'll be stupid things i will go to the grocery store and have anxiety about anxiety and it's just stupid like i will go to the grocery store and literally my blood pressure will skyrocket because i'm having anxiety about anxiety and i will have a panic attack because I'm panicking about anxiety because anxiety is so ugly and it has such a grip on you and it changes you in so many different ways that who honey and the anxiety like I there's a reason for my anxiety is not like the reason why I've experienced anxiety is because I was okay so who the root of my anxiety is I had a baby and a week later my mother died oh in between having a baby and my mother dying in that week I almost died I tried for so long and for so long I mean like years to try to grieve correctly for my mother to try to grieve correctly for what I experienced and I I somehow did it wrong I think I put so much pressure on myself not to fall apart <laughs> because of what I had gone through and I put so much pressure on myself to just try to be present as a mom and to just not Liddell, you can't fall apart, you can't fall apart, you can't fall apart, you have a baby, you cannot fall apart. And I put so much, I'm, I'm done wiping the tears away y'all, cause like, I keep trying to stop them up here and they just like, no honey, I'm coming. Um, I put so much pressure on myself to try to deal with what I went through in the correct way. And yes, I did go to counseling. I 100% believe in counseling. I didn't stick with it for a very long time. And the only reason I didn't is cause that wasn't the counselor for me. And then I just never did go back to research the correct counselor. The co counselor I had, oh my gosh, you would never believe that I went to get my master's in counseling because I can't remember the terms. Um, but the type of counseling I had was just more of those, mm -hmm, tell me more, how did you feel about that? And that's not what I need. I needed like some cognitive behavioral stuff. I needed some tools to understand, um, tools to use when you know depression would hit or when anxiety would hit or any of those things and i wasn't given that so um i just kind of stopped because it it was kind of a waste of my time they weren't providing me anything more than what my pastor um provided me and i felt more comfortable going to her because she knows me she knew my mother she knows my child uh she knows my husband you know so you know it was just easier to go to her and I would. I would go to her and I would ask her to pray with me and sometimes she would come to my house and sit with me and talk with me and it was great. But um, anxiety about um, what I went through in ICU, it attached itself to me and I have worked, my daughter will be eight on Saturday and I have worked since I had her to detach it from me. This is a therapy session right here. Um, I worked so hard to detach it from me. 
and sometimes I win sometimes I lose but I've said this before and I'll say it again I lose most when I'm not in my word I lose most when I'm not praying to Jesus like I should be when I'm not as connected to him as I should be that is when I lose the most and I've been so caught up in my own head in 2018 that I was not connected to him the way that I should be and I would ask him questions and I went to, to listen to the answer because I was afraid of what the answers would be because my questions were hard and they were painful <laughs> And we all want that answer that is going to be um, beautiful and reassuring that, you know, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be wonderful. And I was just so afraid of getting an answer that didn't say that because I felt like I had gone through so much in the last eight years. I'm like, oh God, I can't take everything not being beautiful because I've been through so much already. I can't. I can't take that answer, so I'm just not gonna sit here and wait for your answers because I just, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I disconnected myself from God for a bit. Um, not intentionally, not saying I'm gonna disconnect myself from you, you know, for a little while, not like that, but I just found myself not trusting him as much, um, definitely not trusting him as much, not relying on him as much, not being in my word as much, not, um, really engaging with him as much yes i would watch my sermons or listen to my sermons i've mentioned before that i have an app on my phone that has different um, pastors and churches on it where you can listen to the uh you know the sermons on there and uh i also have a joyce myers app so i can listen to her sermons because i really like joyce myers she makes things seem really simple like oh duh <laughs> and i really appreciate that um you know, and I would listen to them, but I was not engaged. I was not like, you know, I would listen to the sermon and turn it off and then that would be it. And I may not be able to tell you tomorrow, you know, what sermon I listened to today. You know, that sort of thing. I just really wasn't engaged. And on top of that, okay, so let's move away from the anxiety and all that stuff. On top of that, on Christmas Eve of 2017, my husband was called into work. Was it Christmas Eve? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was Christmas Eve. And then my husband didn't come home until like three o'clock Christmas day. And then the emergency that happened at work extended until like January, like almost the end of January. So it was a lot of not seeing much of him here at home. And um, my husband's job is pretty important. So, you know, there was nothing I could do, you know, so, you know, what can I do? Um, so there was a lot of just me and the kids, me and the kids, me and the kids, not really having a break, um, not having any time with my husband, just me and the kids, me and the kids, me and the kids. And then on top of that, he began to study for an exam for, uh, something, a test he had to take for work. Um, and he began studying for the exam. The exam was incredibly hard. It is like if you were in law school you were trying to pass you were trying to pass the bar it's that kind of exam except he's not a lawyer and um the exam was really hard so his studying had to be like we were basically shut out of his life and i was doing my best to be understanding because this exam you know it was really hard and you know other people that have taken the exam validated what he was saying and saying that oh yeah that, that exam stuff he'll be fine um <laughs> So I had a breakdown in May with him where, you know, I was like screaming, like I was just at my wits end, like I couldn't take it anymore, like we weren't connecting at all, we weren't spending any time with him, uh, I was tired of just being with the kids all the time, just me, like literally I was with the kids a lot. And I felt like a single mom, but I'm not a single mom, I'm married. So you know, that was just an issue for me. So. He took the exam and unfortunately he did not pass it. And so then here is round two of him having to pass the exam. But I will say that his study for round two, he did incorporate more time with the family and his studying, but still he was studying. And so there that went. In between that, that summer, I went down to South Carolina to see my family because I have not seen them since Johanna was six months. I have not gone down to see them since then. So I went down to see my family. And then when I got down there is when I realized 
why I had not been down to see my family. And the reason is it is emotionally devastating for me to go down there. My grandparents are dead. My mom is dead. The people that I was connected to the most, they're dead. Um, other people that I love down there, they're there. But it was just really hard to be in a place where when I was growing up, I went to my grandparents' house to stay and now, I had to call one of my great aunts to see if I could stay with her because I no longer had a home there because my grandparents are not alive. And you know, I used to go down there with my mom too and oops, no, nope, she's not here anymore. So that was emotionally devastating and I had a lot of anxiety down there about that. Also, I have a great aunt that is not very kind when it comes to your weight. She is one of those people that would say, oh girl, you are fat, you are so fat. What you been eating? And she, it won't just be one time that she will say that. She will harp on that thing for like ever, for your whole entire stay. And she has literally been like that my whole life. I've seen her do it to everybody. She's done it to me, she did it to my mama, she's done it to my cousins. I've seen her literally do it to everybody. So I'm no exception. It's not like, um, you know, brand new or something. Like, no, you can get it too is what she pretty much is saying. <laughs> like, so I didn't feel like hearing all of that. I'm a person with very high self-esteem, but even I can only take so much, okay? And I love my great aunt more than I can ever say, like more than I could ever say. But that was a bit much for me and I was pretty much done. While I was there, my friend who I found out in June had cancer, passed away in July when I was down there in South Carolina. Let's go ahead and add more to the morning bed because I was just, I was emotionally and mentally exhausted. Like South Carolina was not a fun trip for me. And I really wanted it to be and I was so excited for my kids to see their great aunts and their great great aunts and you know all of that jazz and take pictures with them because you know what a blessing to be able to meet your great great aunts. Um, Cause she, they weren't able to meet their grandmother or their great grandmother. So that was very important to me. But it was just, it was a rough trip. I'm glad I went but <laughs> buddy. So, after summer, my husband's still studying for the exam and then he goes away for a week in October to a conference and we didn't go with him. Initially we were supposed to, but then we didn't and I 75% wanted to go, but there was 25% of me that was like, no, don't go because I knew he had to study for the exam and I was like, what a perfect way to study for the exam by having no kids with you. I mean, because let's be honest, it's kids that oftentimes get in the way of you being able to do your best when you're studying so he went and he for that and he came back a uh, long story short he still did not pass the exam this is not um unusual it takes people a lot of chances a lot of tries to pass this exam but i can tell it's really bothering him because um my husband is a good steward he's a good worker He's good at making sure he does what he's supposed to do. He's the opposite student of me. When I was in school, I would study the night before, then be happy that I got my A or B and you know, keep on moving. But my husband is like, no, I'm going to study for you know months and months and hours and hours and I'm going to stay up till 3 a.m. studying, then I'm going to wake up at six or five or whatever to go to work and it's, and so he was pretty upset by, well, he was not understanding of it, but he was accepting of it. Like he still has to go through taking that exam, but it is not disrupting our family like it was in 2018. 2018 was hard. I lost a really good friend and I, I relived the fact that people that I really love are no longer here with me. I went through a lot of ailments in my body that ailments that I still go through um, that were not mentioned in this video. I disconnected from God. I was disconnected from my husband. Um, our family as a whole was disconnected. I, it was chaos and it was brutal and it was sad. And there were some moments of joy, like the mom friends, um, being a part of the Monference committee here in DC and being able to work with them and put on the Monference was definitely a highlight of my 2018. Um, things like that, you know, definitely were highlights, but there were a lot of low moments, a lot of them in 2018 that, um, oh, and the other thing is 
uh, I'm a bit of an empath. So I take on other people's emotions. And being on social media, Facebook in particular, and seeing everybody lose everybody in 2018, seeing how many people lost their mom, you know, their cousins or friends or whatever, and seeing their pain, um, it was a lot for me. I internalized it and it was, it, 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 uh, it was a lot for me. And what I've learned from that is that when God tells me to put down the phone, when he tells me to back up off of Facebook, when he says, hey, Liddell, spend time with me, put that down, spend time with me, he's trying to refocus me. He's trying to remind me what's important. He's trying to remind me not to live someone else's life, but to stay present in my own. And he's trying to remind me that I have work to do for the kingdom. And I can't do that work if I'm constantly picking this up and I'm constantly on Facebook seeing all the devastation that's happening in everybody else's life. Um, so that was 2018 for me. It was rough, people. It was so rough. Um, I don't know what 2019 is going to be like. I'm not one of those people that's like, new year, new me. Or 2019 is going to be my year. Da, 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 da. Um, I totally believe in speaking that into existence. And I pray that 2019 is your year. But more than anything, I pray that God gives you grace as you go through whatever you go through. Whether it's good or bad, happy or sad. Um, and for 2019, for me... I'm praying that I put down the phone more. I pray that I disconnect from Facebook more and I just disconnect from everything going on in this world more. Which may sound terrible, but I'm way too in I'm way too into the politics and everything else like the hot topics. Like I'm like I'm zoned in. I'm zoned in. I'm not supposed to be zoned in on this world. I'm supposed to be zoned in on Jesus. So that's my prayer that I zone in on Jesus and that I zo don't zone in on the world because he's in control of what happens in this world. He's in control of everything. So there are some things that he's allowing to happen in this world and they are consequences of our own actions, you know, so, you know, can't fault him for that. But I need to disconnect from what's happening out there. I need to disconnect from uh, who our president is and what's happening with that and, and all that jazz. I just need to, it's hard to in DC, you know, it's DC it is the political capital. Like how you disconnect from that? But I need to take a step back. And that doesn't mean that I can't read what's happening in this world, but all the, the back and forth about it, all the debating and all, all that stuff, I need to dis, disconnect off of that i need to stop reading the comments on these facebook articles and such i can't i can't do it anymore because it's, it's doing more harm than it is good the move for me in 2019 is to disconnect from social media more and to live in the present more and to um humble myself before christ more and run after him and run after the, a relationship with him that is what i need to do in 2019 and so that is what i'm going to do my i, I don't have a word for for 2019 because i have a phrase pursue christ that is my word for 2019 that is my phrase pursue christ um so anyway thank you guys so much for watching i am going to do a follow-up video with my goals for 2019 um things that i want to accomplish not just in 2019, but 2019 and beyond. Uh, they are not the typical, go to the gym, lose weight. Um, they're not that basic. Uh, they are more things that I think if I did them, my world would seem a bit brighter. And I think that I do myself a lot of harm by not doing the things that are on my list for 2019. So by incorporating them, I will like life will be better and better managed, including my kids that drive me insane. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.